Hello, my name is Robert Dean Steele, and this is your Cornerstone Community Church Service for June the 16th, and it is, of course, 2024. It's Father's Day. So, Father, we thank you today for this wonderful opportunity to be able to share the Word of God, to bless, and also, as well, Lord, pray, and uh, Thank you, Lord, today for our dads. And now we ask our blessing upon this, your blessing, I should say, upon this service in Jesus' name. Amen. God's abiding peace is in my soul today. Yes, I feel it now. Yes, I feel it now. He has taken all my doubts and fears away, though I cannot tell you how. Mine, mine, blessed be his name. He has given peace, perfect peace to me. Is mine, mine, blessed be his name. Mine for all eternity. He has wrought in me a sweet and perfect rest. In my raptured heart, I can feel it now. He Passing moment keeps me safe and blessed, though I cannot tell you how. It is mine, mine, blessed be his name. He has given peace, perfect peace to me. It is mine, mine, blessed be his name, mine for all eternity. He has given failing joy. Oh, I have it now. Yes, I have it now. To his praise I will my ransom powers employ and renew my grateful vow. It is mine, mine. Blessed be his name. He has given peace, perfect peace to me. It is mine, mine. Blessed be his name, mine for all eternity. Oh, the love of God is comforting my soul, for his love is mine. Yes, his love is mine. Waves of gladness and joy my spirit roll, thrilling me with life divine. It is mine. Blessed be his name, he has given peace, perfect peace to me. It is mine, mine. Blessed be his name, mine for all eternity. Well, that's a great place to start our time together, knowing that you and I have the peace of God, the joy of God, and also as well, the presence of God. Well, of course, our next song is one of my favorites, and it is, of course, that wonderful song, Mighty to Save. I love that song. Everyone needs compassion. Everyone needs compassion, love that's never failing. Let Now I 
God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shine a light and let the whole Jesus, shine a light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior, He can move the mountain. My God is mighty to save. Well, that's a great song, just reminding us today about the fact that God is concerned about the smallest details of our lives. And he is mighty to say, well, today I have a little message for the dad. And there are six traits that I want to share with you today. Now, Father, we thank you over the next few moments that we spend together, that, Father, these traits would be exhibited in our lives. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, in Galatians chapter, Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 4, it says, Fathers, do not exasperate your children, but train them in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Now, as dads, we can, have a we can be a little bit dogmatic. We can also be a little bit overbearing. We can want to impose our will on our children. Many times we say this, you know, do as I say, okay? Don't do as I do. But the truth of the matter is we as dads are actually role models, mentors, and did you know that 85% of our children's self-esteem come from the dad, from being a father? So I want to give you six things that will help you be a better dad. And the first thing that you need to do is, of course, pray for your children. Never forget, that prayer is the most, every day is the key to a successful family. You are the high priest of your home. A family that prays together actually stays together. You as a dad must make prayer a top priority. You need to fight for your family in prayer. It, in fact, it is your highest calling. Christian families just don't happen. They are birthed and maintained in prayer. The greatest memory that you should have of your children is, of course, them praying for you. I asked my wife one time, she, I said, what do you think will be the memory of my children? And she says, praying for them every day. That's what they're going to remember. You see, Job, for example, prayed daily for his family. Joshua made this as his statement. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And it was the promise that was given to the Philippian jailer when it was said in Acts 16, 31, that not only shall you be saved, but your household as well. Prayer is the key. Next, be a loving father. Without love, a father is only a relative of the child. Anyone can be a dad, but it takes a special man to be a father. A loving father is one who loves their children, much like a mother does, in an unconditional way. A father's love doesn't waver. It doesn't just come and go. It is there to stay no matter what happens. When you are a father, never base your love for your children upon what your children have done. This is not a performance chart, okay? Your love needs to be unconditional. 
God the Father doesn't, so neither should we. You can displease, you can be displeased by what they do, but never be displeased with them. Basically, you may not always agree with what they do, but they need to know that you are a loving father. A perfect example was the father of the prodigal son. Interesting enough is that when his son came back, instead of giving him a lecture, he threw his arms around him, he threw a wonderful feast, and as well said, my son, which was dead, is now alive. He was away, but now he has come home. Also, as well as a father, you should be approachable. What I mean approachable is this. Children should feel that their father not only provides for them, but also gives them a safe zone when they are in trouble or have a question. A safe zone is where a child can come and talk with their doubt without him blowing up. They love the comfort in knowing that they can share anything and everything with dad but without the worry of him getting angry or giving them a lecture about it. The more your children feel safe, they will feel that they can tell you anything, the less likely they will keep serious problems from you in the future. Also, be willing to hear. You know, James says we should be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. You know, having time together, whether it's tickle time or, you know, wrestling time, is one of the most memorable memories that I have of my children when they were young. Even my grandsons and my granddaughters love to wrestle with grandpa. They just can't get enough. And it's not just tickle time that's precious to them. It's all of your time. You sit patiently with your children. After a while, they tell you things that they've kept inside and that they would tell no one else. They ask questions about things that they don't understand, and they have the blessing of being able to share with you their experiences, and you have the, ex the wonderful experience of telling them about your experiences and sharing your wisdom. Time with your children is an investment in the future. Better to spend time with them today than spend time with them in court tomorrow or in, when they're in trouble. Also as well, when you spend time with your children, you are hopefully spending time listening to them. You know, it's so easy to cut them off or finish sentences when they're talking. But when children are allowed to have your time and attention, they know that you really do care about them. Be patient and do it quietly with love and give them the chance to talk. They may not really want to talk to you about solving their problems as much as they just want to share their life with you. Don't allow the world to make you bypass these precious moments. You can never get them back again. They may, remember, they may never remember what you say, but they'll always remember how you made them feel. Also as well, as a father, loving discipline. Every father should discipline their children because they're commanded to do so in Proverbs 13, 13 24. But also, when you do it, show them love. A loving father wouldn't discipline their, their own children when they saw that they were going to hurt themselves. Solomon said, My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline or be weary of his reproof, but the Lord reproves those whom he loved, as a father, the son in whom he delights. Isn't that great to know that you can delight in your children and yet lovingly discipline? Discipline is love. Hate is not really the, the opposite of love. It is apathy. And when we show that we don't care, it's not so with the godly. Christian fathers know the difference between also childish irresponsibility and also willful defilement. When a child, for example, knocks over, let's say, milk or, you know, does something rather silly just out of impulse, don't sit there and get mad at them and discipline them. Know the difference between childish irresponsibility and willful defiance. 
I remember when my daughter Rebecca was one year old and we were getting ready to go to church. And I remember as if it was yesterday, there she was standing there in her little yellow dress. She had ringlets in her hair. She was about, <laughs> about 26 inches tall, one year old, had her little white saddle shoes on and her little white leotards. And she was playing in her room. And she said, I said, it's time to go to church. And she said to me, no, daddy, I play. I said, Rebecca, it's time to go to church. She said, no, daddy, I play. I picked her up and gave her a swat on the bum while she just broke, absolutely broke. But after that, she did not say, no, daddy, I pray. You know, and I said, honey, you need to go to church. And she was heartbroken and she cried and she said, I'm sorry, daddy. And I said, that's okay, sweetheart. And I loved her up and we went off to church. Not a problem after that. <laughs> know the difference between childish irresponsibility and, of course, willful defiance. Well, what are we saying in conclusion? Well, of course, this applies to a Christian father, also applies to a Christian mother. Now, there is one thing for certain. You want a close relationship with your children where they feel like they can teach you or tell you anything. That's because you love for them is not based upon what they do or what they are, but they are your child. Remember that. And grandparents too. You can see these same qualities important in your relationship with your own grandchildren. It's a good Christian father that should give their children their love, their time, their attention, their discipline, and pray for them. So Father, thank you today for this wonderful opportunity to be able to share the Word of God with each and every single one. Father, we pray today for Christian dads and Christian moms. We know that there's a lot of pressure on what people think you should be. No, Lord, today you lead and guide and direct each one of us, Lord, to become the man or woman of God that we're supposed to be. And in turn, Lord, we'll be able to bring these qualities to every relationship. And we thank you for this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, of course, we always pray for you. It could be physical, spiritual, emotional, intellectual, financial, or family. And I want you to know today that God can do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond what we're able to ask or even imagine. Now, there are two scriptures I want to leave with you today. And one of them is Philippians chapter 4, verse number 19, that says, God will supply every need according to his riches and glory. And number two, that uh, 1 Peter 2.24 that says, By his stripes were healed. So, Father, today, whether it's healing or provision, thank you that you are bringing it into our life situation. And we are bathing these moments with prayer because, Lord, we know that only you can bring these miracles about, whether instantaneously and immediate or in the long run. Father, we give it all over to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we're going to close off our time together with a great old hymn, and that is How Great Thou Art. I love this song. And I want to share it with you today. Oh, Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all thy hand hath made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, and sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, when through the woods and forest glades. 
when I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the groan and feel the gentle breeze, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, and sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, and when I think that God Son, not sparing, sent him to die. I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul. My Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, and sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home for joy shall fill my heart and I shall bow with humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou That's a great way to close our time together. Now, I want to give you a personal invitation. We have a very special Father's Day service happening today, and uh, we would love to have you join us for that service. Our doors open at 1045. Our service starts at 11 a.m., and we meet at Cornerstone Hall. That's number 6 Tache Street in St. Albert, and we would love to have you join us for that service. Also, as well, next week, we're going to be having in our service a special puppet and children's presentation and it is from the kids on the block so we would love to have you join us for that particular service as well father thank you today for this wonderful opportunity lord to spend time together and we ask your blessing upon this now in jesus name amen well thank you for joining me today god bless you and have yourself a great and godly day